You are watching The View from Hampton U. Exploring Hampton University's rich history, the past, present, and promising future. You've tuned into another informative edition of The View from Hampton U. Today's show will cover the Brazil Scientific Mobility Program at Hampton University and much more. My name is Anessa Cerqueira Perentão and my major is Chemical Engineering. My name is Natasha Vichens and my major is Electrical Engineering. My name is Vanessa Lezaide and I'm doing Biology. Hello, my name is Paulo Weiner, Industrial Engineering major. My name is Tomás Soto de Carvalho, uh, Chemical Engineering, Materials Engineering in Brazil. And we are participating in the Brazil Scientific Mobility Program, that is an exchanging program that sends students abroad uh, to get scientific knowledge. And for me, it, it's been a very great experience because I'm uh, knowing another culture and different people, and also I'm doing classes that is different from my major in Brazil, so it can uh, complete my background, and that's very good. The interesting in the BSMP program is that we can see other points of view in some classes that we will have in Brazil, but here we have a different opinion about the whole things in the scientific field. This is a huge thing for us. Uh, being in this exchange student program here in the United States has uh, been a dream for me since I was a very child. It's very enriching, very important to go abroad and know different aspects, different opinions. Being outside of Brazil is, is just great. And also, uh, being the HBCU is also something very huge for us because we get to know a, a different, very different culture, that different aspects and uh, it's very enriching. This program has the duration of one year and we can take lecture, we, we are doing classes and then we can do an internship, a summer internship. So it's a good experience, I think we can learn a lot doing this. Being in Hampton since August 2014 has been great. We, we live in a very good campus, a beautiful campus. Uh, I can say that being in America for one year it's a, a great experience and I think everybody should try it. So during our program we had the opportunity to know different places. For example, in the spring break we went to the Bahamas. And also we've been to, the, to Orlando with the theme parks, which was the first time either. And we are having a lot of fun knowing different places. Having fun here was very easy because we have been very well received. and. Uh, as I like bicycle, here I can cycle everywhere with security, everyone is, is very cautious and, and traveling around the, the United States is something very, very interesting. I had the opportunity to be in New Orleans and that was just awesome. Being in Hampton University uh, in Virginia is awesome because it's a flat city, Hampton, so was able to bike a lot here in Hampton. Because if we are in America, I was able also to buy a cheap bike, uh, been to Buckrow Beach, uh, meeting uh, a little bit of uh, uh, our area. Uh, I also had the opportunity to go to several other states, uh, more than seven. Uh, but I can say that being in Virginia is very awesome because we have local products like the ham, and they have a good wine too. So uh, the whole experience of being Hampton uh, made me meet uh, this part of America that I didn't know, and of course, other parts. So in our free time, we have the opportunity to watch different sports like the American football that we are not used to. The first time we've been to a game, it was weird because we don't know anything. But I particularly like to go to basketball games and we are, we have the HU Fusion, which is a initiative of the university for transfer students and exchange students, which is a good time to know each other and to know different cultures and everything. Well, the greatest difference between uh, Brazil and America 
United States, it's also the sport. So uh, we have the American football here in the whole country. The basketball it's very strong. Uh, we have also baseball, and I was able to follow the uh, Pirate Ladies uh, in Hampton University in the basketball. I think that they are great. The guys they play very very well too. In the past two months, I've been following them. I had the opportunity to see the Steelers in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. So it's great to see that we have different sports here uh, that we should have in Brazil. And also was very uh, was very good, very fun to see the guys playing uh, football in the first season. Uh, and I was lucky to see them winning like three or four times. As being from Brazil, it's, it's not different from the jargon because I just love soccer. And it was not difficult to, to love also American football as it is a very strategical, strategical game, big teams, and with two, in which uh, the individuality is less important than the team as a whole. And this is very interesting to see these strategies, how, how um, this reflects how American people are well linked together in a community teamwork. This program has the initiative of the government of Brazil and the main purpose is to send students abroad to other countries and then we can use our knowledge back in Brazil. Next up on The View from Hampton U, we'll take a look at one of Hampton University's community partnerships. We'll be back in a moment. When I found out that I had prostate cancer, I thought it was the end of the world. My wife broke down and cried. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. Proton therapy made it a wonderful life. It really did. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Proton Therapy Institute at 877-251-6838. Great day to be alive. My name is Kay Sumner. I am the Superintendent of Cultural Arts for the City of Newport News and the Executive Director of the Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center. We are in the Ella Fitzgerald Theater, which is on the second floor of the facility, and it's a 276-seat venue, and it hosts a series of concerts, events, stage plays, kind of anything the community would like to bring into the facility. The Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center is kind of a unique venue for the City of Newport News. It's a renovated facility and it opened in 2008. Uh, it was the Walter Reed High School formerly. It also was a place back in the 60s where African Americans received health care. So it's been through a series of locations for the community, but now it is the City of Newport News' only cultural arts venue. And so we opened in October of 2008, so 2014 will be our six year anniversary. And each year we like to celebrate building community through the arts with some kind of a uh, huge concert where the community is invited in to celebrate our successes for the year. When the task force got together to decide on the name of the facility, we immediately thought about Norvalite Downing Gross. She was a staple in the southeast community of Newport News. She had so much meaning to all of the citizens, so it was only fitting that by her being a community activist that we named this Community Cultural Arts Center after Norvalite Downing Gross. So now we have the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center. One of the things the City of Newport News prides itself on is featuring the positives out of each of its three districts. So the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center is in the Southeast community and it is a point of pride for the Southeast community. It really is the focal point of this community and so the community celebrates our mission of building community through the arts. The Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center prides itself on strong partnerships. We know that we certainly can't create community and bring arts to the forefront on our own. And so we are so excited for the continued partnership with Hampton University. As one of the main universities in this region, it is really important to us to build bridges and to build strong partnerships with Hampton University students, with the faculty and staff. And so in doing that, we bring Hampton University into Newport News. 
the, the city of Newport News is actually able to bring our arts activities to the campus. So it's a natural marriage of talents. Hampton University has such a rich theater program and has such a rich arts program. So it was a natural partnership and we have really brought to this community some great art exhibits and some great stage plays because of that partnership. One of the beautiful things about our partnership with Hampton University is it allowed us to develop Front Row with Kay. It's a weekly radio show that I have the opportunity to host on Saturday mornings from 9 to 10. And what that show is, it's a radio platform for local artists and entertainers, or maybe some national acts who are coming to the local area. So that helps us, it's a win-win partnership because we're able to advertise programs and events and activities that happen here at the Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center. And again, it's taking us into Hampton University's campus. So again, I talk about the natural relationship and the natural coming together of Hampton University and the City of Newport News' cultural arts activities. It's, it's a fantastic partnership and it allows us to have students on the radio show. It allows us to have students here in the theater or here in the building. And then again, as I said earlier, it brings us to Hampton's campus. There are so many national recording artists who love coming to the Ella Fitzgerald Theater simply because the theater is named after Miss Ella Fitzgerald. We were fortunate enough to open this facility with Roberta Flack. Roberta Flack came to Newport News, Virginia and helped us open the Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center and brought everything with her to the Southeast community. We have had Lettucey, we've had Mint Condition, Tony Terry, Laura Isabor, you name it. These artists really want to come to Newport News and they understand that we have a small, intimate theater and so they are often willing to kind of come off of their compensation a little bit because they understand that this facility is about the community and bringing cultural arts activities to the community and they, they embrace that and they bring with them all of their energy and really share it with the citizens of the Southeast community of Newport News. The Anderson Johnson Gallery is one of several feature attractions at the Cultural Arts Center. Upon entering the Anderson Johnson Gallery, you are immediately introduced to his world and his particular style of folk art. These are the actual walls of his house. These are the life-size murals that he is most known for. This is where you get the real sense and the real view of Anderson Johnson, the folk artist. We are in the Anderson Johnson Gallery of the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center. This particular gallery is one of two gallery spaces in the facility. This gallery is named after a Newport News resident, Elder Anderson Johnson, who was an artist. He was a true artist at heart. Mr. Johnson painted every surface of his home. We are in the part of his home that was described as the faith mission, and he was a very spiritual man in addition to being a folk artist, and he really believed in working for the good of all mankind. And so every Sunday he had citizens and community members come to his house and actually sit in these pews and have worship service. So this space is dedicated to him. This is the faith mission and this is where he felt most comfortable giving his life to God and doing the work that God had him to do. We are now in the bedroom of Elder Anderson Johnson, and this was a very private space for him. He rarely welcomed visitors into his bedroom. This was a place where his creative genius could go to work. As you can see, he has murals surrounding him. Elder Johnson had a passion and a desire to paint women. He saw women as angels, and he wanted to have all good spirits surrounding him. So you see lots of women depicted in the pictures, but he felt safe. He felt that that was God watching over him. So in many of his portraits and his murals, you'll see lots of women represented in his work. You can see this is a replica of one of the most famous pictures of Mr. Johnson that exists. He sat on his bed. He used a chair for his kind of studio where he would put his canvases is what we know them today and he would just go to work often spending hours on end creating the murals and the women it's what he loved this is a point of pride for the anderson johnson gallery visitors are always in awe when they come around the corner and see this real live wax 
figure of Mr. Johnson. His bedroom was a private place and we are so excited to share this small piece of his private life with the citizens here in the Southeast community of Newport News. This particular section of the Anderson Johnson Gallery is devoted to portraits. And as you can see, Anderson Johnson really enjoyed highlighting faces of historical figures. You'll see there's a George Washington, we've got a James Monroe, Abraham Lincoln, um, Martin Luther King Jr. We even have a work desk. It was Anderson Johnson's telephone desk. And there's a picture of George Washington on the sea. He really had an appreciation for historical figures and their significance to our history. But more importantly, he wanted to highlight the strong features of their faces. So that is his artistic ability coming out. And we have a little running joke here at the Downey Gross Cultural Arts Center. Martin Luther King was his last historical portrait in 1994 before he passed away. So whenever we have visitors who say, I have an original Anderson Johnson of President Obama, we think you do? Oh yeah? So really, Martin Luther King was his last historical piece in 1994. And this part of the gallery is dedicated to his love and his passion for highlighting the faces of historical figures. The View from Hampton View, bringing you in-depth interviews, cutting-edge research, amazing sports highlights, faculty and student profiles, and much more. I'm Stephanie Sutton. And I'm Joseph Walters. And, and you're, you're watching, watching The View from Hampton View. And now, the author's spotlight. Hi, hello. I'm Will LaVise. I'm the host of the Will LaVise Show. It comes on WHOV 88.1 FM on Wednesdays from noon to 1 and then rebroadcast on Sundays at 5 a.m. The show covers a broad range of topics, ranging from you know, a little bit of politics, but really talking about social issues, culture, and what we try to do is we try to really feature uh, people who may not be that well known but are doing big and important things. And then also we try to capture people who are well known and who may be in the, uh, in the area or doing things that have a local significance. So we try to cover you know, issues that people are concerned about, uh, address things in terms of culture, but then we also don't forget some of the people who are not that well known who are doing big things like we've had a lot of uh, local poets on the show and so that's been one of the popular features of the battle. So the journey to come to the show, I actually grew up in Brooklyn, New York and I grew up uh, reading the uh, columns of Earl Caldwell uh, who's here at Hampton University as a, as a professor and I also grew up uh, uh, watching Gil Noble who had a show WABC called Like It Is, as well as listening to the radio, WBLS and WLIB, and hearing all of the talk that went on. And so as I got more and more interested in journalism, I always knew that I wanted to have a multimedia approach to what I did. And so after graduating from Lincoln University in Pennsylvania, where I really, really caught the bug to be a journalist, and I, I went on to University of Arizona School of Journalism I actually started my career as a copy editor at the um, Arizona Republic and then moved from there to working online as an editor back when newspapers were first going online and then moved from there to the Tribune Company, to that Tribune Interactive, uh, one of the first uh, executives at blackvoices.com, one of the early pioneering websites, and then moved from there actually to being a columnist at the Daily Press here in Hampton Roads, and that's where really um, I think I began really getting a sense of wanting to do radio as I heard WHOV and had some conversations and actually started teaching over here at Hampton as an adjunct. And so my journey kind of moved not in a straight line by any means, but going from one jump to another and then ending up at Mix Magazine with the Virginia Pilot where I was the editor and eventually became a publisher and was also doing a TV show called Mix 11 where I got the exposure of you know, being on air, being in, in, in front of the camera and interviewing people. And then that eventually led to, again, what I always knew that I wanted to do and be in multimedia, 
doing the Will Levy Show here on WHOB. You know, working at Hampton and being around you know, a lot of bright students who are serious about wanting to do great things in the world and in this environment that really cultivates being special, you know, and doing something you know, that, that's not just um, you know, being an ordinary student, but coming out and doing extraordinary things. You know, it's a great place to, for, you know, for me to be and for any professional I would think to be. This is one of my, you know, one of my most favorite books. I, I've actually written uh, three books. One of the other books that, you know, are as well known as, as popular as a book that my brother and I, Thomas Levice, wrote for the Tom Joyner Foundation you know, on preparing for college. But this book fired up four steps of overcoming a crisis, including unemployment is one of my you know, really personal favorites because it's, it was born out of a crisis that I experienced when I was actually let go uh, unexpectedly you know, in, a, in, you know, in a way that was really could have been done much better. But I was unexpectedly let go and that sort of shock of re really moving my family from Virginia back to Chicago and then six months later being called into an office and handed a manila envelope saying your services were no longer needed. You know, that was something that really uh, caught me off guard. And so as I really began writing the book, what the book is really about is how the book got written. And so you know, there's a scripture that says that a man's gifts will make a way for him. And what God led me to do was actually to use my gift of writing to make a way for me to get out of that crisis and so as I began writing and really expressing how I was feeling what my thoughts were and my experiences have been I started to realize that you know I have a book on my hand and so I went back and really cleaned it up and I decided to publish it myself rather than to try to pitch it and go through the whole process of, of, of publishing companies because I'd already been published before so I understood what that process was like I decided to go and publish it myself so that I can get it out there as quick as possible. And the book came out a few years ago, but it's, it's amazing how I still continue to get emails, I still continue to get phone calls from time to time, the people who have read the book and have really been moved and really been helped by it on how I give these steps on how you can come out of a crisis, whether it's unemployment, whether it's a divorce, whether it's the loss of a loved one, and how you can take these steps, these four steps that can really get you to the point of really focusing on what your true destiny uh, really is. And so this book and that whole process really helped me to start refocusing on what I really wanted to do, which came back to this radio show, which came back to me even being in graduate school and working on my doctorate in New Media Studies at Old Dominion University, which came to me really building my consulting business, which I'm working now and really thinking about what are the things that I really want to do with my life and how I wanted to travel the world. And one of the things that I'm actually going to be doing, you know, very soon is I'm actually going to be going to Mongolia. And so it's very interesting how when things happen to you, tough things happen in life, if you can really refocus, really get your mind right on what it is that you really want to do, how those, those crises can actually propel you to really going towards your true destiny and really doing the things in life that you want to do. And that's what fired up Four steps to overcoming a crisis, including unemployment, this definitely can help you to do. And again, this is Will Levis, host of the Will Levis Show on 88.1 FM WHOV, getting you over the hump each Wednesday from noon to 1 p.m., then again in the morning on Sundays, 5 a.m., just in time for you deacons and deaconesses to get up and hear me. I appreciate your support. Check out the show, and thanks for watching. Don't change that channel. We'll be back in a moment. Proton therapy was much easier than what I was expecting. I thought surely I would have some side effects. The Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute is treating prostate, breast, lung, pediatric, brain, and other cancers with the most precise form of radiation treatment available. And I had no side effects whatsoever. So it was the best decision I ever made. <laughs> if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer, call the Hampton University Proton Therapy Institute today. Join us next week for another exciting episode of The View from Hampton U.